Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense. Today we're gonna to be looking at five real estate investment trusts. Those are REITs. Uh, we're gonna be looking at current prices, seeing if they're too expensive or if they're undervalued. Uh, also seeing what hedge, hedge funds and institutions are doing and just overall looking at the charts. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. This is a viewer requested video. So we got five stocks, we're gonna do one video. I'm going to do it a little bit faster than normal, so just try and keep up with me. So, uh, looking at ticker symbol DLR, this one has been doing very well. I mean, if you would have bought this almost at any time in the past, you are up, except for if you purchased um, ba -ba 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 -ba, May of 2020. If you bought May of 2020, you're about break even right now with current prices, uh, just going down and taking a peek. A few things here, let me just my camera. Okay, a couple things. Uh, number one, look at the sales. This is absolutely amazing, beautiful. EPS is kind of all over the place, but if we look from the 2019 to 2023, it is up and to the right. Um, we are very overvalued at the moment, and in the future, we are very overvalued unless the company beats projected guidance, which hopefully they do. Um, looking at the sales over the past five years, 12.62%. That's great. EPS over the past five years, 19.9%. Absolutely incredible. They offer a beautiful dividend. If you are worried about getting into one single stock like DLR, don't worry. They're actually in the S&P 500. So you can own the top 500 companies in the US and DLR is in that basket. So there is, if you wanted to diversify, give the S&P 500. I mean, looking at history, if you would have just purchased into DLR on its own, past 10 years, 20, 30 years, you would have been okay. Well, I guess not 30 years, but 20 years. So um, that's great. We're gonna go ahead and I actually ran my calculation here to test if it was working. So basically we have a mark cap of 48.9 billion. Income of 1.12 billion, sales of 5.47 billion, which gives us our 55.5 billion. Our cash, they have 1.19 billion in cash, which is great. Debt, 18.378 billion. Uh, and then we have our total with our, we have our top total and then incorporating that down here, our new total is 38.395 billion. Then we divide that by our shares float of 322.53 and we get a stock price of $119. Current stock is at 151, meaning this is overvalued. And that actually matches up right here with the PE saying it is overvalued. And also just adding on to context, this calculation right here that I'm circling does not incorporate dividends because they are giving out their cash flow to shareholders uh, in particular, 3.22 to 3.29 percent. So the 119 is still a little high. Um, all of the price targets are above like 150, 175. Uh, this thing is hot. I mean, it's still it's getting back to where it was from four years ago. So there is definitely a lot of momentum on this one. Uh, in terms of hedge funds and institutions. Uh, old data suggests they own 98%. Again, this is old data because Finviz does not update daily, whereas this website does update daily. You can see they're at a 101% right here. Nice big drop off from where they used to be. However, let's see. Big boys and girls have been adding, with the exception of Cohen and Steers. You can see uh, Vanguard added 3%, State Street 6%, BlackRock 7%, and then Norges Bank added 15.5%. 9 million shares. So in terms of DLR, um, if you're thinking about getting into this one individually or getting the SP500, uh, honestly, looking at the track record, you might be okay. Um, but that's up for you to decide. We're going to move on to the next one. So we just looked at DLR. Now we're going to look at BHR, which is Bramer Hotels and Resorts. It looks like this one has not been around that long. And it's almost, a, it is a penny stock. Uh, let's go ahead and run the count. 
calculation. They have they blah, 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 blah. they have a big dividend. They're not profitable. So I see some troubled waters. They need to cut that dividend ASAP, which I'm sure they probably have. Uh, let me just confirm. BHR. They didn't. Well, one second, one second. Un momento, por favor. Shoot, wrong button. Monthly is what I wanted. Okay. So I've actually charted this one before, which is great. Um, this is probably one of my favorite. 114. So we're out of, we're out of this fib arc. Um, which is great. Uh, we have broke out. So now beautiful. I mean, that's, that's perfect. This is the perfect channel. You can see it tests resistance, kisses it one, two, three, four, kisses it four times. It's basically a long-term relationship. Then it tests the support one, two, three, four, five times. It is a long-term relationship. So uh, the level of confidence with this channel is good. Um, in terms of what we did break past that, we did break past that. So now we're left here. I think we might be seeing a nice move uh, beginning, a nice move beginning. And we're going to look at hedge funds and institutions because that's going to be our giveaway. Um, again, going a little bit faster than normal. I'm skipping the technicals here. So again, they're unprofitable, quite a bit of debt. Gross margins are actually not too bad for a real estate investment trust. Uh, okay, let's get this loading for institutions and hedge funds. And let's open up our handy dandy brand new spanking GUI graphical user interface. <laughs> okay, so if it is a uh, mark cap under 1 billion, we don't count it. So zero there. Sales is, I'm sorry, is income. This is minus 73,980,000. Uh, income is, I'm sorry, sales is 743,120,000. Yes. Perfect. Okay, cash on hand. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. And we'll get the quarterly. All right, they have 219 million in cash. 219, 420,000, Total debt, 1 billion, I need to remove one zero. 1 billion, 23 million, 580,000. Yes. Okay. And then shares float. They have 58,390,000. So that brings us to a, sh a negative share price, which means this disqualifies from being in the running for anything. But let's go ahead and see what institutions and hedge funds are doing. Old data shows that they own 54.9%. New data shows 60.77. Okay. So uh, just overall, institutions and hedge funds are adding, which is kind of a tale. A tell. Vanguard. Oh, wow. Vanguard added over 100%. BlackRock decreased 13%. Okay, and then we have these two. Uh, remember these two names, Saeed and Al Shams. Saeed and Al Shams. Okay, I was thinking they were executives or something. Well, the CEO is buying. I love when the CEO buys, but these are very trivial, small amounts. Um, wow, and he's very underwater on those purchases. Uh, total assets, $2.2 billion. Total liabilities, $1.4 billion. So there is a... $800 million buffer there. Let's go back a year from today. $2.4 billion to one point five, Almost a whole $1 billion buffer. So their buffer's getting tighter. Liabilities are adding up. Assets are... Actually, 
yes, at liabilities are going up, assets are going up as well, but that buffer is getting squeezed. And then in terms of, are they getting closer to profitability? Good question. What did I click? Are they getting closer to profitability? Yes. Well, yes. Well, <laughs> kind of. Okay, last year they had 3.19 million in profitability. This year, 3.5 million profitability. So I'm guessing we're going to see Q2, Q3, and Q4 also be potentially negative. Last year in Q2, they were net income positive. This year, I mean, sorry, two years ago, net income positive. Last year, negative. So kind of a toss up at this point. I think what you need to do, I mean, I'm not trying to um, short, not short, uh, be short on this conversation with this company. But if a friend or a stranger gave you a booklet and said, hey, we're a hotel REIT, we offer a 7% dividend, which is very high, we're unprofitable, our assets and liabilities are getting tighter. Um, gross margins are 14%. Our earnings per share over the past five years is negative 42%. I would stop there and I really would not invest much more time in this, which is why we're going to cut this short. But for you as a viewer, I want you, if you're interested in this, check this out. They might be doing something great. And I'm actually just curious because I do want to actually see. Um, I mean, this stock... It, it is disqualified from our metrics. However, their assets to liabilities aren't really a red flag at the moment. There's not a red flag in selling. The red flag for me is the dividends, which... Let's see. Daily. They're still paying a dividend, which is no bueno. No bueno. And if you're wondering, like, hey, Ryan, why are your candles under this line? I look at the bigger picture, so I look at the monthly. So on the monthly, you see the candle dip under, like right here, dipped under, dipped under slightly. It's it's fine, for me at least. Okay, let's see what Braemar Hotels and Resorts looks like. Maybe. Um. Yeah, also for your viewers, if you're interested in this one, check out the CEO on LinkedIn or the president and the... Why isn't that Richard Stockton? Okay, the president and CEO. Check his LinkedIn out. Is he... Does he have relevant experience? Has he been killing it before? How long has he been in the positions of power? Okay, so they invest in luxury hotels and resorts, which tells me... I like this because people who travel luxuriously are not being really affected by what's happening in today's economy, uh, wages, etc. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly interested in this one. Um, this is beautiful. Is that like Oregon or Montana? We're gonna find out. Okay, so while Braemar is loading, um, we're going to get out of the, the regular website. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a good tale story here. What we want to see, and for income, let's just look at the quarterly income. 219. This is actually really good. They're, they slightly did better than they did last year, which means uh, they could be setting up for a, a record-breaking 2024. Uh, they just had earnings May, so I think they had Q2. Again, Finviz is slow to update, so. All right, portfolios. I just kind of want to see a map. Okay, so it wasn't Oregon. Sarasota, Ritz-Carlton, Ritz-Carlton, St. Thomas. Very cool. Uh, Chicago. I like Chicago. Okay, so... Very cool. Um, I'm going to leave you at that. The rest is up to you. Uh, but they need to cut this dividend and put it towards their business to make it more efficient and attractive because penny stock right now. All right, moving on. 
Uh, Net Street Corp, uh, trading at $16. Good dividend. They are profitable. They are very, very, very expensive. Look at this. But look at this. That's fast. That's beautiful. This is good. It's positive. Uh, let's bust out my you-know-what. Okay, they have a market cap of one billion one hundred ninety million. Income, they're profitable six million four hundred ten thousand. Uh, sales, they do one hundred forty million one hundred wait nine hundred ten thousand. All right, and cash on hand. Let's see what they got. Let's see what they got. We're gonna look at the quarterly. Oh, not that much cash, but you know, twenty-two million three hundred thirty thousand total debt. Total debt seven hundred thirty-four million ten thousand. Okay, and shares float seventy-three million. So this is an $8.57 stock, but they're also giving away 5% of their free cash. So this should actually probably be 5% less. 5% of $8.50 is 40 some cents. So this should be around an $8 stock. So this is very true that it is a very overvalued stock at the moment. And it looks like it's actually gonna might continue downward. Uh, but I let's chart this one because I think we can capture. And what was it? NXRT, NTS. Did I have that right? ND NTST. Okay. I won't. I've charted this one before, man. Okay. Twenty six ninety trade. It's fine. Thirteen forty nine. 49 right there sure okay um i would say this is medium confidence where the candles are respecting the fib lines look right here perfect support for this candle like it's resting on it like a rocking chair great resistance it stopped right below it magnificent support just sitting on it like that then it tests it one two three beautiful support Beautiful resistance right up to it, kissed it and said goodbye. Came back down, touched here as well. Uh, candle fell through, candle came up. Then we have this candle right here just saying, hey, we gotta make sure we can get a clean touch on this one. So this is the cleanest touch for that inner ring. Almost touches the inner ring here. Uh, then this mid ring here, we can see it's almost perfection. But all these, I mean, this is nice test, but I think we see at least some more chop and some downside with this area being our apex area and the apex area is our area of opportunity. Either it's going to get shot down or it's going to rise up. I mean, we could go up here too. So again, our area of opportunity is right here. This stock should be trading around 50% of what it is right now, in my opinion. Um, gross margins, 40%. Let's see what institutions are doing. What are they doing? What are they doing? Old data shows they own 125%. What do they see that we don't see? Let's just go down here really quick. I think we can find out what they see that we do not see. Ah, I found it. Did you find it? All right. Well, let me tell you. So Q1 of this year, they did 37860000 in revenue. Compared to last year, they did 29650000 That's a 10, 20, over th maybe 30, 2, 4, 6. Nah, between 20 and 30% increase year over year. That is magnifico. So if they do 37, well, Q1 looks to be their weakest 
and then go so i mean let's just be very conservative 37.86 times four they're on par to do 151 million in this year which again eclipses here so this stair step is only going to go to up and up and up and up i see what institutions are coming from so 125 is old data new data i'm going to guess 130. Yo, yo, 153, that's a 28% increase. Are you joking me, dog? Oh my, right through the stratosphere. Vanguard added, Cohen and Steers added, T. Rowe added, a whole big position. Principal added, everybody added. This, who's this? Morgan Stanley increased their position like a map. Oh my gosh, look at integrated core strategies, 790% increase. They went from 435,000 shares to 3.9 million shares. Holy bonanza. And the stock is still trading on the low. Wow. So, and they offer a beautiful dividend. So, they should be valued at 150 million. So let's just tweak this. What if they did sales at 152? Uh, barely brings up the calculated stock price. I mean, it's overvalued, but a lot of this growth and stock price is going to be carried by institutions and hedge funds. And look at this. Let me. Look at this rise in volume right here. Obviously, uh, we're very early into July and they've this company's traded 2 million shares. But at the height, it was 24 million shares. I mean, I think it could break that. So, and what do they do, NTST? Single tenant net lease retail properties. And what are their gross margins? Whoa, whoa, yo, 40% for a REIT? This is something, this is special. This is special. This guy, Mark Mannheimer, hey, there's no red flags down here either. No red flags. Okay, well, who is this? Todd Minnis. He sold out about less than 50% of his ownership, but he probably got options. Yes, he did. So we got 4,000 in options. So again, not a red flag. And in terms of income, they've been profitable. Dude, this could be a good one. Not a lot of shares outstanding. I don't like this. The shares outstanding increasing your rear looks like they're adding to the supply which is not good for people like you and me because bigger the supply, the bigger the pool, the demand is going to remain the same unless you got big money. But uh, again, I would I keep this one on high watch, but it looks like the momentum is heading down, but the money flow is heading up. And the relative momentum is 44. Keep it on, keep it on high, high, high watch. But it also, it's also a REIT, which means you're not going to get really good gains. I mean, look at these gains. There's no gains. Like, ever since the stock came into inception in 2020, 2020 it's down. So, uh, there was one point it went from 17 to 26, 27, but then it fell 50%. So, yep, yeah, uh, I think... Just waiting, but keeping it on high watch. That's, we got to move on. Spend a lot of time on that one. Okay. Ooh, I like this setup. Ooh, 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 I like this one already. Fantastic, fantastic. Excuse me, fantastic. It's cheap. 4% four, 4 <gasps> excuse me, dividend. That's beautiful. Got a big, got big debt. Let's uh, let's run our calcs. Let's run our calcs. 
Oh, they're just under a billion, I think. I think we got to count it only because actually we're going to, this is a deal breaker. N X R T. Okay. So the only reason I say we got to count it is because only if our institutional ownership is higher than 83%. If it's higher than 83%, we're going to count it because it puts the market cap over 1 billion. Okay. Old data is 83% new data. Oh, it's 81. We're not counting it. We're not counting it. I thought we were gonna. Okay, so they're profitable. Uh, where's my? So zero here, unfortunately. Although should be counted back in. Okay, seventy-four million four hundred forty thousand. That's an extra zero. Let's take a zero out. Sales is two hundred seventy-five million eight hundred eighty thousand. All right, let's go down to cash and debt. Cash, shh, 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 shh. 68 million, that's the most cash they've had in a couple of years. Good for them. Okay, cash, 68 million, 750,000. Debt is 1 billion, 453 million, 620,000. Brings us negative. Uh, total, yep, and then shares float is 22,590,000, extra zero. Okay, so we're negative here. I kind of just want to add here. Even with that, are, we're still negative. Why are we negative? I mean, it's big debt. It's the debt that's crushing us. It's the debt. But I mean, look at this upswing. I normally would not consider, but assets 2 billion, liabilities 1.5 billion. That's about a $500 million buffer. I feel comfortable. Uh, we got insider selling, C remarks. I'm guessing these are planned or tax, whatever. And it's not that many shares. Okay. So although this does fall out of our calculation, um, you, you can't argue with this right there. Um, and then let's see what institutions and hedge funds are doing right here. They're selling a little bit. Yeah, they're selling. What well, I wonder what they said for Q1 quarterly revenues. Let's see. Uh, 67 million compared to last year, they actually are going down. So there's a little bit of caution here from big companies or the big investment institutions and hedge funds. So I feel comfortable passing on this one, but I do like the setup of it's heading out and let's just see an XRT. I have not charted this one before. Six ninety five oh four, perfect. Down to here, low is twenty six twenty nine. It's about as far as we're gonna get. Wow, look at how well it respects these candles. Just kiss, 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 kiss. Perfect, almost perfect. Kisses it, comes down perfectly supported so let's wait on this one obviously but 1035 10, 1035 10, whoa 1035 10, right there dude come on did it go I feel comfortable with that. And I feel comfortable there. That's a huge channel. Um, so, and then. Ten thirty five, ten thirty five. Uh, I feel comfortable there too. Okay. 
So you could ride this one for a momentum play. Great volume. Like it's been heading down and it's kind of based here. So yeah, I, I'm going to have to pass on this one. But again, it's cheap. Good gross margins. They're profitable. They're very profitable. Almost a billion dollar market cap. Um, super low float. They're not diluting shareholders. EPS looks like it's going down and maybe reversing overall, but next quarter should be a big tell for everybody. So um, just be careful. I do see also, I do want to call it out because I love to chart a bear flag. So here's our flag pull. Here is our flag. Basically what I just drew, you can see this long blue one is our pull. This is our flag. Basically, it's going to trade in here. And if it is a true bear flag, we could see it fall out lower and maybe go back to this channel. So I'm fine waiting and seeing. Um, I mean, historically, though, it's decent. It's trading at levels back in 2019 when it was almost $100 million less in revenues. So you weigh, you got to out, you got to weigh the risks and rewards here. Um, this is the first REIT that we're seeing where institutions are selling. So moving on, moving on. All right, uh, last one, we are on the monthly. They're profitable. This is beautiful. This is choppy. You can see from 2019 to here, we're kind of going downward. Uh, let's see what institutions are doing for WSR. And we're gonna run my Actually, do we even need to run the calculation? If you've ever, if you bought this from the beginning of 2011, you're flat. You've not made any money. Unless you bought in 2020 during the pandemic, you're up nicely, but it's just not, it hasn't returned back to normal since 2011, unfortunately. Let's see what institutions, institutions own 62%. Okay, we're going to do this by hand. 34,988,819. Okay. Yep, that's right. And we're going to take that and divide it by 43,700,000. Eighty percent. So it's actually up times 100. So it's up from 62 to 80 percent. So we do have the big boys and girls adding overall vanguard slightly decreased less than 0.1 percent and then blackrock decreased by 1.1 percent uh mcb doubled down almost adding almost well adding over 2 million shares which is cool for them maybe actually i don't know they just bought so maybe uh gosh Good gross margins, good profitability. They offer a decent dividend. It's a little expensive currently, but in the future it's cheap. Um, I don't really want to run my calculation on this one because I can tell it's going to be, it's just not. They're doing, yeah, like it's, they did 37 million this year, 37.76, last year they did 36.17, so. They're growing. They're doing what they can. They're, you know, they're a small time company at the moment. They need to, uh, how much cash do they have? Let's check out the cash. 23 million. They need to make some acquisitions or. So engages in the operation of commercial properties in culturally diverse markets of major metro areas. So, not luxury. I mean, it could be luxury. But the sales here are just not, not as bolsterous as the others. Bolsterous, I don't know if that's a real word. Um, and then actually, we do have some decent buys down here. Amy, just Amy bought a ton at $13. 
Wow, 222000 at $13. So Amy is... Amy bought kind of at the upper Bollinger. So uh, I would just wait on this one. Wait till this gets back to the middle Bollinger. You can see the price kind of tracks to the midline here, this orange line. Be patient. Be patient with this one. Again, they're not bringing in billions of hundreds of billions. They're bringing in less than a quarter million a year. So, which is good. They're going to only grow from here. So keep it on watch. I'm, I would, I'm not going to keep it on watch, but if you are interested in REITs, keep this one on watch. We're at the end of the video. If you made it this far, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.